Hey guys, welcome to the video or you might be listening to the podcast. Now, if you're listening to the podcast behind me is a sign that says, say no to no SQL in 2018. So this is going to be triggering, but I think it's an important uh, subject to discuss because it's uh, true, number one. And number two, it goes right along with my key philosophy here, the need to nerd philosophy. Need to nerd philosophy is a pragmatic philosophy of software development, of business, of learning development, etc., etc. So let's just jump into it. So first bullet point, uh, NoSQL base systems, database systems, uh, are an example of what I call the tech loop. I've been writing code for 23 years or more. And one thing I've seen over and over again is that you get a cycle of uh, Technology coming in favor, out of favor, in favor, out of favor, in favor, out of favor. So what happens, a new group of uh, developers come into the game, and then in a few years they discover an old technology that the previous generation rejected. And so the new generation goes, wow, this is such a cool technology. Let's try this and let's evolve it. So NoSQL is an example of that. It's a... It's a next iteration, I would say, of a flat file based database systems. So before I go on, let me back up a little bit, back up a little bit, just in case some of you are new to this. A database is simply an app and a file structure to store data, a data, a base of data, a database. There are different types of databases out there. The most popular by far is something called an SQL database. Some people call them relational databases. SQL is a language. It's a universal standard language of these relational databases. So relational database is an SQL database. SQL is the language, the universal language of relational databases. Relational database bases store information in virtual tables, kind of like a spreadsheet where you have columns and rows of data. And the big advantage of the SQL database is that it's very organized. The information is highly structured. And a key part about the SQL database is that you have a consistency and an isolation and a durability of the information. This is part of what they call the acid, uh, the acid uh, quality of the, uh, of the uh, SQL database. So what does acid stand for? I cannot pronounce this first word, so I'm going to try Auto, Automicity of the data, consistency of the data, that's number two, isolation of the data, number three, durability of the data. Essentially, when you use an SQL database, you have a technology that's 40 years old now, that's been refined and run through its paces in the real world. So you know when you hold information there, the information is gonna be, it's gonna be autonomous, it's, it's gonna be consistent, it's gonna be isolated, it's gonna be durable. That's very important because you don't wanna mix up your banking information, right? Now, NoSQL is a flat file based system where there's different variations of it. I'm not going to get into the details because uh, the point of this video is not to break down the details about a NoSQL database. I'm actually here to uh, smash a little bit on the NoSQL databases. Now, the one huge advantage of the NoSQL database is it's e- more easily uh, scaled, meaning if you happen to have the next Facebook or Netflix, some huge site, with a NoSQL database, in some cases, if you can use it, depending on the type of data you're storing, because this data storage, as far as I understand, a NoSQL database, the integrity of the data is not as easily well maintained as you would with an SQL database. But with a NoSQL database, you're able to more easily uh, shard or break apart your databases and then scale them horizontally. Horizontal means, you know, like a horizon. That means you're basically able to more easily break your database up into multiple little databases across different physical servers. So you could scale it much more easily, much more quickly. Whereas with relational database, the scaling is vertical, meaning in one box. But here's the thing. Point number one, 99.99% of you are never going to be writing apps that require uh, huge scaling and sharding of database. It's like pff, very, 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 very rare. And one of the basic need to nerd principles is you use technology on a need to nerd basis. 
you don't implement into your apps, into your code, um, implementations that um, might be needed in the future. That is adding complexity needlessly to a code base that has no advantage because, again, let's be realistic, there's only one Facebook out there, one Netflix, one Yelp. There's not very many huge apps out there. It's very rare. And here's the thing. If you built your app the way you should build it, which is light and nimble, we'll get into that in a second. If one day it becomes the next Facebook or it starts growing into the next LinkedIn or whatnot, and for some reason your traditional database, the SQL database, if for some reason your SQL database, I'm going to tell you why you should use SQL databases 99% of the time, um, your SQL database for some reason does not, uh, is not able to scale, which I doubt will ever happen, then you, can, you will have the resources, you will have the money, you will have the, the ability to, ease, to migrate some of your data into a NoSQL format. So it's not something to be too concerned about. I get that question. What about MongoDB? What about NoSQL? What do you think about it, Steph? Well, I'm answering. I think that most of us, most of the time, that's a 99 percentile, are not going to need NoSQL database. And you shouldn't do it because there's a lot of advantages. There's many more advantages, in my opinion, to an SQL-based database, the ACID stuff I was talking about, the integrity of the data and so on. And there's other advantages as well. So let's get into it. Um, with an SQL-based database system, it's tried and true and standardized. SQL, the language of SQL databases, is a, is a standard language. It's used in many different SQL databases. There's not just one type of SQL database, just like there's not just one NoSQL database. There's several out there. Now, the thing with SQL-based database systems, they call them RDBMSs, uh, Relational Management Database Systems. Um, these uh, databases, the SQL-based databases, that's what I'm calling from now on. These SQL-based databases, they uh, all use uh, the SQL language. Now, there's many out there. There's MySQL, there's Oracle, there's MS SQL Server, there's Postgre, and there's other. They're all SQL-based. Yes, they all have their own things to do. There's, so you have the, all these databases, I just mentioned, MySQL, Oracle, etc. They all have the, the core, the ANSI, I think it's ANSI 89 core SQL. What does that mean? They all follow the core requirements of SQL. So you write your SQL select statement, blah, 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 it's going to work across all of them. They also have extra capability on top of that as well that you can leverage as well. So it's, but the point is, is that once you learn how to use an SQL database, you'll be able to migrate from one to the next. And in fact, in my career, I have used three or four types of SQL databases and to move from one to the next was not a big deal. Let me give you a quick example of how the uh, software development community, community uh, often over-engineers their software, even down to, even on a community level, meaning even uh, the whole community gets caught up in this idea that never actually happens in the real world. So I'll go back way back to the 1990s when I was cutting my teeth in uh, writing code. And I remember in the Java community, that was my main language at that time, they were big in uh, database abstractions. Database abstractions meaning having a layer of code sitting on top of, on top of the database. And Java de developers were obsessed with the idea of being sure that their app could be switched over from one database to the next without much or any code changes. Now, very difficult to do even if you have a very sophisticated layer of code sitting on top of your database in terms of uh, being able to switch from one database system or software to the next. Uh, that aside, the big issue for me was that in 23 years, I have never heard of or seen a company move their app off of one database system to the next. It's extremely rare, as rare as Facebook, as rare as Netflix. It's very rare that you're going to be switching out databases. So that being said, didn't matter. The nerds, being nerds, decided that it was so important that they have to have systems that were database independent. So they overly complicated the code base 
with these libraries so that they could interface or talk to any type of database just by switching, you know, we're going to talk to MSSQL, we're going to talk to Oracle, just by, you know, switching a couple, a little bit, a few, few lines of code and bing bang, it's supposed to be able to play nicely with these different databases. You add, again, adding complexity for a situation that will probably never happen. And again, in my 23 year career, I, I've never heard of anybody doing it. I have never even thought about doing it. In reality situations, when people write code, they write apps, they're gonna to stick to the same database that they use from the beginning with some very, very rare exceptions. Very rare exceptions. So that's just one example. I could give you a whole bunch of more where we find the developer community at large over-engineering the way things should be done. And in fact, with, with Java in general, Java got so over-engineered, a, 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 a literal revolt of programmers happened and a lot of Java people took off and went into the Ruby camp, as an example, or other, other places, because Java just got too heavy, too verbose, uh, it became a bureaucratic language, if you will. So there you go. Try to adhere to the need to nerd principles, meaning don't over-engineer over code, don't build an app so that it's, you know, with the expectation it's going to be the next Facebook, it probably won't. Just get your app out as quickly as possible. Like any, any modern VCs will tell you, MVP, they call it MVP, minimum, minimal viable product. They've learned over the years, as any entrepreneur knows, you want to get your product out as quickly as possible, get it into the hands of the users and, uh, so that they can start using it. So don't over-engineer. And going back to the subject of this particular um, podcast or video, you don't want to be jumping into no SQL because unless you have the next Facebook, which you don't know you have if you're writing something new, uh, you're not going to need it and you're going to be losing out on all the advantages of SQL-based database systems. So there you go. I'm not saying no SQL is crap. I'm just saying for 99% of us, 99% of the time, you're better off, far better off using a standard SQL database. I hope this is interesting and useful to you. And um, that's pretty much it. Bye-bye.